Well, hello, everybody. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and to be glad. God is good. I want to share with you today about the two reasons why the Tower of Babel fell. I want to also emphasize today that we are in a spiritual warfare in this nation and, of course, around the world, and that God is doing great things in the midst of the battle. We're seeing prophecy being fulfilled. We're seeing God doing things in the Middle East. And so this is an exciting time to be alive. And God's going to have the last word like he always does. He's not forsaken you. He's not forsaken this country or wherever you live. And if I would be in a country, regardless where my residence would be, I would declare and decree that God bless if I was Mexican, I would say, God bless Mexico. If I lived in El Salvador, I would say, God bless El Salvador. The Christians need to make a proclamation in the country that they live in. And I believe God would honor that in the name of Jesus. And so I want to encourage you to do that as I pray every day, God bless America and one nation under God. And we declare that in the name of Jesus. In the last couple of weeks, the Lord's been sort of stirring my heart and to share with you a message about Babel. We want to share this with you, and I pray it will be a blessing to you and also give you um, some ammunition as you pray. Hello, Edith. God bless you. So we're in Genesis chapter 11 today, and we're talking about the Tower of Babel. Now the whole earth had, got, had just one language and one speech. I don't know what it was, but that sure would have been handy. Amen? But verse 2 says, And it came to pass as they journeyed far, or journeyed from the east, that they found the plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Now let me read to you. Shinar was the region known now as Iraq, isn't that something? And was the location of the ancient kingdom of Babylon. Now the leader was Nimrod, was the one who decided to draw all people together to form a powerful society and secure them or to secure their unified might by constructing a massive tower to symbolize human pride. Listen to me, whatever we do, and especially as Christian people, whatever we do, we must always give the glory to God or that which we built will come tumbling down. If it's a, if it is a ministry, if it is a business, whatever we do, especially as Christians, we always have to give the glory to God. And if we don't, it'll just crumble down into nothing. Now, verses 3 and 4, it says this. Then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for martyr. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the entire earth. The sound, they sound just like the devil, where it says in Isaiah 14, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. So this initiative to build this tower, the very source of it was the spirit of the enemy, the devil. The people were driven not only by a rebellious pride, let's make a name, and self-sufficiency, but they feared lest they would be scattered. Let's talk about this, making a name for yourself. God doesn't like that. 
There is only a name above all names, and that's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The more God puts into your hands, the more you have to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is such a, uh, just a drive for man to want to put his name on something and that they are just exalting themselves. We must be careful because we don't want what we build be built for ourselves, but we must build it for the kingdom of God. So the people were driven by rebellion. When people want to make a name for themselves, it is a spirit of rebellion. Now let's go to verse 5. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Scripture says he came down, which means he was overlooking the tower, which means it was quite humorous for him as the people were building this tower, they came down. Now, let's talk about Noah just for a moment. Noah built an ark. But Noah did not build the ark for himself. He built the ark underneath the instructions of God to be a place that people could be saved. So let's think about this. What are you building? Are you building something for yourself? Or are you building it for other people to be a blessing? So if you're building it for other people and you're building it for the glory of God, and you're building it to be able to minister to a lost and dying world, then God is going to bless that and it shall not fall. But if you are building it for yourself and say, look at me, what I have done, it will come to nothing. So God doesn't mind if you build things as long as you're building it for the glory of God. The same reason why we build churches. What's it for? Is it for the glory of a denomination? Is it for a glory of a man? Or, it, or is it for the glory of God? So everything that we have, it must be for the glory of God and not for ourselves. It must be built to be able to be a blessing to other people or otherwise it'll come to naught. It won't happen. So the Lord was looking down from the tower, which to me is quite humorous. These people were trying to build a tower up and God's looking down to see how it's going. The people could never, never reach heaven or attain it. God's greatness, no matter how high we might try to build something, will never, never surpass the greatness of God. Isn't that foolish? We sort of look at the people who made the Tower of Babel and we're thinking, what were they thinking? But God might be asking you today, what are you thinking? Who do you think you are? that you would build something and want to smear your name all over it and want to exalt yourself. Now, listen to this. What happened in verse 6 and 7? 6 and 7, it says this. And the Lord says, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will, will be withheld from them. Verse 7, come, let us go down, there it is again, and there confuse their language that they might not understand each other's speech. So confusion came. They couldn't understand each other. That was done in just a moment or so. And confusion came and they had to split and to leave. Now, I am praying for the peoples that are coming against the kingdom of God, coming against the United States of America, coming against good people around the world. I declare and decree that confusion will come into their ranks that they cannot understand each other. Now, 
There are times that we speak the same language, but we don't understand each other. So I'm praying that confusion will come to any group of people that want to tear down the things of God or a, or a nation that has been uh, committed to God and that it was started one nation under God. And there is an attack of the enemy against the United States of America. But there are people who are born-again Christians that are praying. And we need prayer in this nation because there is a group of people that want to destroy this nation. So this is why we pray and we release the spirit of confusion to the enemy's camp where they will talk the same language, but they will not be able to understand what each other is saying. God is going to send a confusion to the enemy's camp in this nation to be able to save this nation. We're not fighting against Republican or Democrat. We are fighting against a spiritual war of evil and of good. And I declare and decree that good will prevail in this nation in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat or you like them or you don't like them or you like the Republicans and you, and you don't like the Republicans. It is not a Republican Democrat battle. It is a spiritual war, and this Babel needs to be taken down because there are people in the Democratic Party, there are people in the Republican Party that want to make a name for themselves. They want to just toss out God and don't want God in their midst. There are people like that in both parties, but we're declaring as a group of Christian people in Jesus' name, this tower of Babel that they're trying to make in this country shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. It shall come down by the power of God and the power of prayer in the name of Jesus. So if you're fighting the Democrats or you're fighting the Republicans, you don't have a clue what's going on, my friend. The battle is not with the Republicans or Democrats. The battle is bigger than that. It is a spiritual battle. And this day, I declare and decree that there will be confusion in the enemy's camp trying to take down this great nation, the United States of America. Now, this is what I believe with all my heart, that America is the nation that will sit, that has sent out more missionaries than any other country in the world. It has been a blessing to the world. Have we had our mistakes? Yes. This is why we're praying for it to change. This is why we're coming against the spirit of abortion. This is why we're coming against the spirit of child trafficking and drugs and etc. We are asking God to clean this nation up and he's doing it. That's why the other side is going nuts because we're seeing a change in this nation. And as this nation changes, it will help other nations to change in the name of the Lord. Oh, I could, I'm telling you, I'm excited. I'm excited. So God scattered the people. They went their different ways. I want to make sure that I read eight and nine. Uh, let's see here. Verses 8 and 9, so the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they ceased building the city. Hallelujah. I declare and decree that the enemy will stop building the city against the United States of America and against the world. You see, the devil is not just after the United States of America. No. The deep state, the cabal, is not just after the United States, although this is one of the biggest targets. But the target is the world. They want to take over the world. They want to put in communism and socialism and etc. This is why we are praying and believing 
and fasting and declaring because it is a spiritual war. It is not just a political war. It is a spiritual war. And we declare and decree that the towers of Babel will be destroyed and will come down in the name of Jesus. Our prayer, our our victory will be won on our knees. Our victory will be done in declaring and decreeing in the name of Jesus. And so they scattered, the, the God scattered the people. They went to different places, human diversities, ethnics, you know, social groupings. That's where that, I mean, that day is where... And I know there are other preachers that are deeper in this than I am, of course. But, you know, the, the Spanish and, and German and, and all these different languages of the world went from there. And what's crazy is that, you know, the, out of that came L- L- Latino nations and, and, and Germans and, and uh, the, the list goes on. He scattered them. He scattered them around the world. Now, the real reason that the tower was built was security. They wanted to control their circumstance. And today, the whole issue is about control. Yeah, put a mask on. Control. Now, don't do, there was a sickness. I agree that 100%. I'm not, because I've had some friends who got sick with it. I know of a person that died from it. I am not putting that down. But the fear that they have brought with this mask is this craziness, you know? And you can only be six feet apart from each other. A little bitty virus just shut down the whole world. It was a demonic attack, not on just the United States, but around the world. Now, listen to me, my dear friend. So they wanted security. They wanted to control their circumstances. What does the world governments want to do in this day, in this world? It wants to control you. It wants to control you. Wants to tell you, you, and wants to tell you, you can only be six feet apart from each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it is a spirit of control. And so I declare and decree that that tower is coming down. Now, the next reason for the, 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 the reason they built this tower was significance. Creating a city, a town that would magnify their name. Magnify their name. And that's what the tower was all about. It was controlling their circumstances, creating a city and a tower that would magnify their name. You see... The world, the devil, wants to clone us so that we be, you know, look all alike. Um, North Korea, all these different communist countries, we declare and decree that that shall not overtake this country in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare and decree that the towers of Babel will come down. What do you mean, Gordon? The towers. You put an S. Yes, the towers of Babel, the towers of communism, the towers of socialism, the towers that are anti-God. The Democratic Party puts, they don't want God. They kick God out of the Democratic Party because they don't think they need God. They are building a tower of Babel. And I declare and decree that any group of people that is anti-Christ will come down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the one that we will worship and glorify his name. It's not about us, my dear friend. It's all about him. All about him. Let me close with this. Two groups of people. One, they built the Tower of Babel. Two, Noah and his family built an ark. So God is not against us building things. He's against us when we build things for ourselves. You see, the Tower of Babel was 
to magnify their name. Noah built the ark so that others may be saved and not lost. What are you building today? Are you building something just for you? Or, or is it for the kingdom of God? Is it so that you can bless? I know people who have things. They are not sharing them with anybody. They're not giving of themselves the things that God has put into their hands. I feel sorry for those people because they're building a tower of Babel and they're not building it for the right. Check this out. A little history. I love Hershey candy bars. Woohoo! I love Hershey uh, kisses. Number two, I like Ramona's kisses better. But Hershey's kisses are number two. If you'll know a little bit about Hershey, he's the guy that made the candy bars, of course. They named a city after him, Hershey, Pennsylvania. They're still doing it. But you know what he'd done with all the money that he got? He built schools. He, uh, you, you look it up and see all the things that this man did. Now, he's dead and gone. But what he accomplished, he began to realize, wait a minute, this is not just for me. And so he built a school for young people, a high school. And there are other people who are listening to me that are more educated on Hershey, Pennsylvania than me. But look it up for yourself. Google it and see what he's done. That Hershey business is still around today. Awesome. But then there was a man that, gave, that, that made millions of dollars in real estate. He died and left his grandson millions and millions of dollars. His grandson moved to Los Angeles, California got involved with some wrong people and about three months ago jumped out of a building in Los Angeles, California to his death. You see, his grandfather left all that money to somebody that didn't know how to build the right thing. So whatever you have in your hands, it's not yours. It belongs to God. You're just a caretaker. That's right. The house that I live in, I'm just renting it from God. <laughs> it's not mine. The car that I drive, I'm just leasing it from God. It's not mine. It's his. What are you building? Are you building something that's going to last? Or are you building like in the New Testament, where, they, where the Lord tells us, don't build your house on the sand. What does that represent? The sand represents the world, the world system. But if you build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're putting it on solid ground. What's the house represent? Your life. I'm telling you, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that people will start living right, doing right, and building right. Then what are you building also in your children? Are you building and teaching them to be selfish, and it's all about them, and it's my toys, and it's my room, and it's my bicycle? Or are you teaching them to be givers and telling them we are stewards of what God's given to us? I think we need to check out our motives, why we want a bigger house, why we want a newer car, why we want this and why we want that. We need to check out, are we building the Tower of Babel or are we building the ark that Noah built? Amen? Just some things to think about today. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for praying for us. We prayed for you guys this morning, Ramona and I, in our devotions today at 9 a.m. Every morning at 9 o'clock, we pray, we read the word of God together. Men, lead your woman in devotions. You sit down with her and you pray with her. Woo-hoo. It's marvelous. 
Thank you for supporting this ministry financially. I bless you in the name of the Lord. God bless you, New Destiny. God bless you, Vanny. Let me see who else is with us. God bless you, Charlie, in one of my favorite cities in the world. It's so beautiful out there in Libby, Montana. Augusta Jones, God bless you. We love you, Angel. And then uh, uh, Miss Mot uh, Botel, God bless you. Luis, God bless you. And Robert and Patricia and Edith, we love you guys. Thank you for being my friend. What are you building? Are you building an ark or are you building a babble?